Thank you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Father Tom Papazoglakis, and I serve as rector at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Thursday in the week of the 17th Sunday after Pentecost, Proper 20. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly, and even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our lesson is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the sixth chapter beginning at the twelfth verse. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by His power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with Him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. Here ends the lesson. Today's reading begins with Paul saying, All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. This was said in response to a false teaching familiar to the Corinthians that says everything is permissible for a person if they decide it is beneficial for them. Paul refutes the idea that a person can be reconciled to God and the ways of God while also choosing to use their free will in ways that are opposed to the ways of God. In other words, just because someone has the technical capacity to do something does not mean it is the right or godly thing. He also makes the case that making choices opposed to the ways of God leaves a person vulnerable to being enslaved by one's choices and thereby superseding their free will to make the right and wise choices. Paul begins his argument by refuting the idea or false teaching that there are no boundaries set by God on the limits of one's liberties. His point is based on the principle of love applied to both neighbor and self. Liberty, if exercised in a way that is not beneficial and may even do harm to someone else or self, is not loving. Liberty can turn to slavery of sorts when the exercise or testing of the limits of liberty becomes the master of one's choices. Paul provides an example of how he saw this happening using the analogy of food. He referred to a slogan being used by some Corinthians to justify practices that he understood to be immoral or opposed to the ways of God. The Corinthian reasoning was that if food was both pleasurable and necessary, and their stomachs signaled hunger, then the appropriate remedy was to eat food that would satisfy their hunger and even their need for food. This argument was then used to say that if one eats food to fulfill the hunger of the body and the human body also signals its desire for sexual fulfillment, then that need also needs to be satisfied. Paul challenged this precept drawing a sharp line between the stomach and the body, saying the body or soma is more than the physical body we see in a mirror but is in actuality an integral part of the whole person, composed of flesh, or the material, and spirit, or the immaterial. 
by understanding the body in this holistic way shows that the body is not perishable, as implied by the temporal analogy of food, but eternal, and as such is not meant for sexual immorality. The body is integral to union with the Lord, and since the substance of the body has been confirmed by Christ's resurrection, it is in actuality integral to the eternal or future destiny of the individual and their body. His ultimate argument is that moral choices are intimately connected to the work and presence of the Holy Spirit. And so to violate this sacred relationship is to grieve the Spirit of God as the Holy Spirit dwells within and is present with every Christian. His point is that the union of two people involves more than physical contact, much as a Christian's union with Christ likewise affects both that person and the Savior. So one cannot act without affecting the other. His admonition was to use free will wisely and flee from sexual immorality so that God may be glorified and not be grieved or shamed by the misuse or abuse of this sacred gift of love that God has entrusted to our care. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you made the universe with all its marvelous order, its atoms, worlds, and galaxies, and the infinite complexity of living creatures. Grant that, as we probe the mysteries of creation, we may come to know you more truly and more surely fulfill our role in your eternal purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturdays or 8 or 9.30 on Sunday mornings. If you're unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings.